Hey, it's Bender from acetennisonline.com where I help you level up your game. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at the MR Auto Counter Serve and break it down bit for bit and show you a few things that you should know about it. And there are always some great little tips that you can copy from professional players. I'm not saying you should copy their technique bit, you know, all at once, and you should always have your own style, but there are always a few things that higher level players do that we might not realize that really could help us at the recreational level as well. So let's start with the first, and we're gonna divide it into eight different stages on the serve. And the first one is all about the start. Now the start is all style, no substance. So what that means is the start, like how people start, really doesn't impact the quality of the serve. Now think about Roger, Serena, Raducanu, Isner, Karlovic, um, you know, all the Venus, all of the great servers, or just anybody in general. I, I just threw Raducanu in it because, because obviously she, we're doing a video on her right now. But any server, McEnroe, um, Hengis, I mean, you name it, Navratilova, all the servers in history, almost all of them have a completely different style, but it doesn't mean that they were bad servers. I mean, the, the first part, the starting, is really just about it's really style. It's it's something that you do that might be a little bit unique to you. You know, Macron will have that little, you know, low rack and a kind of that little rocking motion. But everybody starts a little different, but that doesn't impact the quality of the serve. So let's get into the second segment, and that's all about the loading. Um, sorry, the release. The loading is going to be the third part. So the, the release part here is really just uh, all about the toss, meaning where, how, when, why we release the toss. And as you can see, that her tossing arm is straight in this, mo in this matter. And when we toss the ball, we want to try to limit the movement of our joints. So our wrist joint, our elbow joint are the two that really are most common at fault when we have trouble controlling the toss. And you see a lot at the recreational level where players... They have the elbow bend a little bit, or they're kind of flicking the forearm, they're flicking the wrist. And so those are really common mistakes when it comes to, or things that will hurt your consistency on the toss. So notice how her arm is straight. And that's, again, something super simple that you can do at the at your level, whether you're a 2-0, 4-0, 5-0, it doesn't matter. It's something that you should easily be able to do, keep your arm straight to control that toss. Now, another part of the whole re the releasing stage here is you see how that motion is going from the front foot to the back foot to the front foot. So that little rocking motion going back and forth, almost any high level player will have that. And it's just a little bit easy way for us to, to kind of rock back and then go forward. So that means it helps us get a little bit more momentum as we push up into the court. So helps a little bit with rhythm, timing, weight transfer, just like a, a good little tip that, that helps you get a little bit more power, a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more fluidity in your service motion. Last thing about the release that I really want to talk about real quick, and that is where she releases. And Dr. Mark Kovacs, he's a biomechanics expert. Uh, he used to be the former strength and conditioning coach of John Isner, and he's, um, he's broken down the serve and the toss, and he's looked at hundreds and, and maybe even thousands of players when, uh, when and where they release the toss. And for all of them, they release the toss right between eye level and top of the head. So it's a very narrow window for where higher level players release their toss, in order for them to keep it most consistent. As you can see, now it's just about to leave the palm here, right around top of the head level. And so that's, again, something really easy that you can easily copy, whether you're a 2-0, 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, it doesn't matter, something that you can copy to improve your toss. All right, the third stage here is going to be the loading stage. As you can see now, as she's getting in the loading stage, here's something where we probably see more differences in you know, professional higher level players versus recreational players. At the recreational level, we typically see a little bit less of our legs loading. So that's something to keep in mind and how, how much legs you want to use. I mean, how much you want to bend them is totally up to you. I mean, if you're in great shape and you want to get a lot of knee bend in there to get a little bit more power pushing up into the court, again, something that you can easily do that's, that's, that can help you get more power and more height on your serve there. So loading, and as you can see, um, What's very interesting here about this is just how her hand and her and her racket are both pointing up towards towards the sky at this point. Something that that you know doesn't happen with every player. I mean, there's some players who will keep the racket face kind of skimming over the top of their head. So I think Federer is a little bit more like that. 
Uh, but so she has both arms uh, basically pointing up in the air. And I will tell you why that's important in the next part. But so here in the loading stage again, so now what she does is it's that slider motion. So she moves her back foot, which is her right foot in this case, up to that front foot. So she's sliding it up to that front foot. And that brings us to that little pinpoint stand that we have right here. Now, another really important thing that, again, you don't see at the recreational level that often is the back, the fact that we can see her hip and even uh, part of her front a little bit. So watch how much she's turned. She's actually, like her, her chest and her upper body are facing a little bit more backwards. And that means by keeping this shoulder back, she has a lot of ability to uncoil into that surf. And that translates to power. I mean, if you look at her, She's not particularly tall or, you know, she's not a, like physically big. Uh, compare, compare her, she might be 120, 130 pounds versus John Isner, who is over 200 pounds. He obviously has a lot more force and a lot more pounds to put behind that serve. And that's why he gets a bigger serve. But for her size, she actually has a very powerful serve because she's loading very efficiently and she's able to uncoil and add a lot of power into that shot. So... And this is something, again, that, that you see at the recreation level a lot less. And that is where players, especially with that back hip, is facing a little bit more forward. So players tend to open up the hips and the shoulders a lot earlier, which means the lower the level of a player, the more likely they're going to rely just on their arm. So typically, once players start, like the higher you go in level, the more body they will basically basically use for their shots. And whether it's the forehand, the backhand, the serve, um, it you see it across almost every single shot there. So watch her once again. So her, you can see her shoulders kind of facing more this way. Hip is even facing up more that way. So she's really almost turning away from her opponent. And it means that her back is actually almost showing to her opponent. So that means she has a lot of ability to uncoil in that serve. So let's just kind of fast forward. Let's see how she's really turning now. Now we're going full uncoil and explosion into that shot. But let's get in that fourth, fourth stage. And that is all about... The, what we call the cocking phase. And that's kind of where, where we're back in here. And that's that's this little thing where we're loading the racket and we're able to cock it and drop it down here. And as you can see, this lag is really interesting. And it's, again, something that you don't see at the recreational level as much because players tend to be a lot more stiff with their muscles. So the racket doesn't really drop as much as their body goes up. So the racket typically goes with them. Again, this is something that is a, harder to copy and harder to integrate into your own game but the the motion upwards, the explosion upwards, is something that's super easy to, again, incorporate. Because I see a lot of players, especially at the, at the usually 3-0 level and below, who go up a little bit with their upper body, but then they kind of like hunch over, and they and that's how, how they think they get power. But watch watch Rod O'Connor here. Watch as she's getting out, in that, out of that cocking phase. And... See from the cocking into the uh, acceleration phase. So next stage number five here would be the acceleration upwards. So cocking, and now we get into the acceleration phase. And as you can see, her energy. Look at her. Look at those legs. Legs pushing upwards. So now she's really exploding up into that shot. And as you can see, she's not. She's not going forward a whole lot. She's not landing eight feet inside the court. She's landing a few inches inside the court. So most of her momentum is going upwards. Again, something that's really easy to copy at the recreational level and something that you should be striving for. So meaning by actually pushing up into that shot, you're going to be able to reach higher. And if your contact is higher, you're going to be able to get more power and more consistency on your serve. Now, take a look at this again as she's exploding upwards. Look which way her chest and her shoulders are facing. And we call this part thoracic extension. So basically, she's bringing her chest and her shoulders. They're facing upwards. They're not facing sideways. So she's not turning around. So she's not doing this. She's not turning around. So where her shoulders are, are at the same level and they're just kind of turning from left to right. But she's actually going, she's going over the shoulder. And that's another really thing that I should uh, back up for one second to mention. As she's in that loading and that cocking stage here, um, watch how her left shoulder here is actually a lot higher than her right shoulder. And so as we get more into the acceleration upwards, something really important to notice here is that she is pulling the left arm down. See how as she's pushing up with the leg, she's pulling down that left arm. And something to, to keep in mind there is the faster you pull your left arm down and your left shoulder down, the faster the right shoulder can go upwards. Oops, wrong tool. Here you go. 
So meaning pull the left side down as the right side goes up. And that's what I'm talking about with she's not going around, but she's going over. So see how her right shoulder here is going over her left shoulders? So that's just a perfect, perfect example there. That's, that's really good clean technique here. And so now we're in that acceleration phase. We're going upwards, beautiful motion upwards as she's extending. So now, so see how her elbow and her chest and shoulders, they're all going up, but that racket is still pointing down. It's down here. So now that's where that lag comes in. And again, something that you don't see at the recreational level typically. So now she's going up and exploding towards contact. And here's a really great example of how far she's off the ground. That's, again, this is something that higher level players do. They jump up into their serve, giving them more height, meaning allowing them to, to hit downwards more with less spin. So meaning the lower your contact is, the more spin you would need to make that ball dip into the service box. And what that means is the more spin you use, the, the less ball speed you have. Meaning a flat shot will travel through the air faster than a shot with a lot of spin. So if they're hit at the same speed. So meaning if you have fast racket head speed and you hit a flat shot, the shot will come off the racket faster than if we have the same racket head speed, but turn that into spin. So meaning if we have a higher angle and we have to use less spin, that ball can travel through the air faster, meaning faster ball speed on the serve. So, and what, what I really want you to look at here on the contact point is, watch where her contact point is. So look at, I, I love this angle, it, because it really shows how, how extended her arm is, and it's, her contact point is almost right above that right shoulder here. So look, right above that right shoulder is where our contact point is, and that's how we're really getting that shoulder over shoulder rotation and get a lot of power on it. So this is a beautiful angle, a uh, little side note here. Look at how tucked in her elbow is because she's really, as she is starting to explode upwards, remember from the from this stage, so look, as she's exploding upwards with legs, her left arm pulls down as the right arm goes up. And that's why we're tucking it in because the, like, once we tuck it in really fast, that's how we're able to accelerate even faster with our right arm. So beautiful angle here. Then we have that contact point. And after that contact point is we have the deceleration. So we're in stage number seven right now. Six was the contact, five was the acceleration, four was the cocking stage. Now we're in number seven, the deceleration. And this is something that I, I just love. I love watching players being super smooth when they finish. So the deceleration process, we have to look at two things, what the racket does and what her body does here. And so as you can see, and this is something that this next tip Super simple to implement in your own game. Again, if you're two five three five four five, take a look at what she does. So take a look at which way that ball is going. So as you can see, that ball is kind of, we're going, let's say that way. And so meaning, look at where her weight tra weight transfer is going. We're going from here to about here. So the weight transfer, the way she's jumping, she's jumping in the same or a very similar direction to where she's sitting. And again, that's something that's super simple to do and something that you should be doing when you're hitting. So transfer your weight forward towards your target. And here's a great way to, uh, to control yourself. Watch which way her leg is going. So wherever you're going, the way that you're going, the other leg should be going the opposite way. So look, she's jumping forward a little bit. And where she's landing with her left, her right leg should be going the opposite way. So in this case, as she's jumping forward, right leg goes the opposite way. So if you're jumping forward, your right leg should be going backwards if you are a righty. If you're lefty, just the other way around. And that is if you're jumping into that serve, if you're not, uh, that's okay. Then your left leg, uh, so your right leg won't be lifting up like that and that's perfectly fine. But your weight transfer should still be going forward when you are serving. And then the second thing is we want to take a look at what that racket does. And the deceleration part process on more advanced players is a lot more smooth. So think about you want to have a smooth deceleration process. So think about if you're driving on the highway, you're driving at 60 miles an hour, and if you slowly take your foot off the gas, you're going to slowly decelerate, nice and smooth, nice and comfortable, versus you're going at 60 miles an hour, you're jamming on the brake. I mean, it's super uncomfortable, you know, it, it doesn't feel good. So meaning that's the equivalent of us using muscles. So if you're using muscles to stop the motion in a really rigid way, we're not smooth, we're not fluid, we're not efficient, and we're gonna get less spin and less power as a result. So easy way to stay more fluid and more smooth is A, relax, and B, making sure we exhale. 
So when you exhale, and that's why a lot of players grunt, they are able to exhale and relax the muscles as we hit. And that actually gives us more fluidity and it makes for a much smoother, efficient swing. And that gives you more power. Contrary to what you might think is, oh, if I want to hit harder, I need more muscle. You don't really need more muscle. I mean, I've seen players who are, you know, super skinny, super tiny, but because they're so efficient, you know, they're hitting the crap out of the ball. Uh, and I've, I've seen players who are former football players who, who can hardly hit it because they're just trying to muscle everything, but they're not fluid and efficient. So make sure you have that smooth deceleration. Look at when she finishes here. It's just going all the way through. So see, no, I mean, it doesn't look like she's engaging a lot of muscles because that, you know, look how smooth she's just moving at the end there. And then she's right back in her position. Finally, stage number eight, super simple one here. And that is eight is the finish. And again, that's more style and substance. So after, after you finish, I mean, how, you, how exactly you finish is a little bit of style over substance. But then after you do finish, you do want to make sure you get ready for the next shot. And again, there we see a lot of commonalities. And again, it's something super simple that you can easily implement in your game. So when you finish that serve or when you, after you finish any shot, you have to get ready for the next one. Again, something super simple that you can implement. So as you can see, after she's landing, she's getting both foot, feet on the ground. Um, she's pushing back a little bit, and then she's split stepping. So in this case, this could have been this probably could have been a second serve. I mean, this looks more like a second serve a little bit because um, it has a little bit more of a, of a of shape to it, a little more spin to it, uh, a little bit safer towards that middle. So in this case, she backed up a little bit because she knew it wasn't a super aggressive serve. So, but again, once you once you hit that ball. Once you hit that serve, get ready for the next shot. Make sure you split step. And then, you, as you can see, she's ready to move to that next one and be right back in the rally. Now, so we took a look at all eight stages of the serve from the start, the release, the loading, the cocking, the, uh, the acceleration, the contact, the deceleration, and the finish. So all eight stages, and I gave you a few tips along the way that you can easily implement in your game regardless of your level. Now, that's the Emma Raducanu serve, super fluid, beautiful serve to look at. So take a look at what you can maybe use in your game. But other than that, it's just a beautiful serve to just take a look at and admire. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button like she smashed that serve. And I'll see you in the next one.